Hey, what is happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So most of you guys know if you've been following me, watching my videos, we have built a bunch of stuff for the axles for this FJ40 Land Cruiser. Now we are doing a Dana 60 front and a Sterling 10.5 rear axle on this thing, one ton axles. It is gonna be wide and big. It is a lot of fun. We went and built trusses for the front and rear axles. We built high steer arms, but you know, we gotta move on. We went and did the front. We got the front stripped out, the stock axles out of the FJ. But the rear, we still have the rear factory axle in. So today's game plan, I want to get everything off of the rear. We got to pull the axle out, shocks, all that stuff, cut all the mounts off the frame, just because none of that we're going to be using. So we're going to do that. And then I want to get both axles kind of slid underneath the truck and figure out where exactly we want them, figure out how much stretch we want. Like I said previously, I'll probably bring the back axle maybe about eight, nine inches back, just because there's so much room. As far as the front axle goes, it is already pushed so far forward from the factory. I'll probably only push that forward maybe an inch and a half or so, but that's gonna put us right about 100 inches of wheelbase, which actually for a small bodied rig like this, that is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that number. So that is the game plan today. Now you guys know I've been waiting for my rod ends for all my links. While it does suck waiting, these are the best rod ends on the market, so it sucks waiting but they're a small company and they're there's out completely out of stock so they're going through and making a bunch of more joints we should have those within a week so we're getting really close once we get those rod ends we can actually really dive into the suspension and start building some stuff actually getting the links built we do have to figure out coilovers as well for the we're doing coilovers front and rear so i'm so excited this thing is going to be so much fun to build but that's enough chatting let's get to work on the rear get this rear axle pulled out of here get the uh, mounts everything cut off the frame like i said get these axles underneath with the 40s on the axles front and back and see what this thing's looking like
Well guys, we got both axles back underneath and that is sitting right about where I think I want it. That's about front and rear is about seven inches of up travel. We can't really cut too much out of this until unless we completely tubbed it out, which would be a lot more work. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Uh, but seven inches of up travel isn't terrible. We'll probably kind of have a lot more down travel, but that is not bad. I just don't want to go super tall with this. I want to keep it low, I want to keep it stable. So I think that is probably about as low as I'm going to be able to get it on 40s without just completely redoing the frame up front, completely redoing the cab and the, like the fender wells and everything in the back. I think that's about as low as I can get it. So I honestly like it. It looks really good. Looks stable, obviously, with the width we're not going to have much st stability issues. So I'm stoked. I am really digging how it's looking. And I, you guys saw I did cut these fenders out. That's kind of roughly what I'm going to go for. That actually looks like it fits the tire really well. It almost looks like it's meant to be. Uh, but either way, we're going to have to redo these all these quarters and a lot of the sheet metal. I mean, this stuff is pretty much gone. So we had a uh, we were able to kind of do a test cut, see how it looks. And then once we're, once we get into body work, we're just going to build all new quarter panels and that whole rear section that's all rusted. So it's all going to be new metal anyway. Well, I'm going to start working on something else on the truck. So in order to get these axles centered, one of these lasers works really, really good. Basically what you want to do. Yeah. You can mark the floor and I've seen other people do that, but what I, it's just without marking the floor up what i do is just mark put a mark on the axle on the front put a mark on the axle on the center of the rear and then mark on the frame and then you just take this laser and turn it on and line everything up you can see so i got a mark on the axle right there uh, and then you can also just take a tape measure measure in between the frame rails the front and the back Make sure everything's centered. It's a really fast really easy way to get everything centered up and straightened out I'll have this thing linked down below super cheap on Amazon super handy tool to have when you're trying to line everything up like this So what I'm working on now is I'm still Fighting this driveline problem and what I'm thinking I'm gonna try I have just enough or I should have just enough clearance that I can drop this transfer cable back down to its stock location for one this plate is leaking you can see it's kind of been dripping a little bit I'm not sure what's going on there that plate I built for that adapter plate was supposed to fix all the leaks but it's still leaking so I kind of want to figure that out for one and for two I think just dropping this back down rotating it back down is gonna help a little bit with driveline issues now I know I spent so much time trying to get everything tucked up and I might scrap that idea just because my link mounts for one are going to be hanging down right about here and that's going to be lower than the transfer case. I can just build a little a little skid plate for the transfer case if I'm worried about that. Everything else is really nice and tucked up. So I think I'm going to try it and just see how how much clearance I have on my cross member. I don't want to completely rebuild that cross member, but I, I may have to clearance it a little bit but I think it'll clear honestly and I think it's going to help out with my driveline issue so let's pull the transfer case back out we'll pull that plate off we'll throw the transfer case back in just like factory and see what we're looking like with that All right, we got everything in here and you can see it is barely rubbing on the top of that cross member. That's not enough to make me want to rebuild the entire cross member. So what I got is that uh, that poly mount came with this little plate here. I'm going to raise up the tranny about an eighth inch and then I'm going to pull this cross member out and just kind of cut this out a little bit, get some quarter inch plate and weld it in there and drop that down maybe just like a half inch just to make sure we have plenty of clearance. And with some quarter inch plate welded in there, it's honestly not going to be any weaker if we do it right. So let's cut this out. Let's get a little bit more clearance in there and I think we should be fine.
So there's been something bugging me about this cross member and that's how I use the bolts going through the inside of the frame with the nuts on the inside of the frame. Every time I take it on or off, it bugs me more. So I'm gonna fix that right now. We are gonna cut some plates out. We are gonna weld some nuts to it and then weld the plates on the inside of the frame. That way we don't have to mess around trying to stick our fingers inside of the frame. We'll have the nuts welded to the inside of the frame. That's gonna make this so much easier for taking the cross member on and off. All right guys, we are back together. You can see cross members bolted in and uh, let's get a light. We got about, probably about a half inch of clearance when this uh, drive line is completely at its max down when I lift it up to where it actually would be. We got even more clearance, so that is definitely gonna work. Also, as far as the drive line frame issue, this does seem to help out right about there should be about straight connected and you can see we got probably closer to i don't know closer to an inch of room maybe three quarters to an inch of gap so like i said i do want to jump this up in wall thickness I'll probably go quarter wall or 3 16 but that is going to be a bigger outside diameter so it's going to be a little bit closer to the frame it's probably only going to be about an eighth inch on each side so we should still have plenty of clearance well guys i think we're going to have enough clearance on the drive shaft to frame especially after we rotated that transfer case back down that did seem to help give me about another half inch of clearance so just rotating it down just getting it lower and then obviously when you're rotating it kind of runs inboard a little bit too probably not a huge amount but it definitely did move a little bit. Now I know you guys are gonna say, you spent so much time trying to make this thing a flat belly. Well, like I said, it's not a big deal because in that same spot, I'm gonna have like my link mounts, my link brackets hanging down off the frame. So that is gonna be in the way anyway. And either way, I still needed to do that trans tunnel. I needed to make that way bigger just to fit the transfer case and everything. So realistically, it didn't really cost much more time, but either way, I could have made that cross member better, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I did do that little piece that we cut out. That new piece is quarter inch, so I think it's still got its strength. I don't think we're gonna have any issues there. Plus, you know, it's just holding up the tranny. It's not soup. It's not like, you know, something's bashing against it. It's not a ton of weight. I think we're gonna be just fine. Well, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Why don't you go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.